Hi everyone, Ian here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can morph one shape into another shape. Now, the reason that you would use a morph in cavalry is when you're morphing from a shape that has um, one point count into a shape that has a very different point count. So if the shapes have the same topology, if they've got the same point count, you would just use the blend shape, um, which is like uh, you would have in a 3D app, it would just um, literally um, move the corresponding points into a location from the other blend shape. Um, however, uh, when you're using shapes with very, um, completely different topology, you're going to need to use the morph behavior. And the morph behavior has a couple of tricks um, that you'll need to know to use it well. And um, yeah, so without further ado, um, let's get going on that. Okay, so in a new scene here, the first thing we'll create is a new uh, polygon. So I'm just going to alt click on the polygon tool to create that. And then we'll um, scrub the radius to make that larger. And then our first morph, we're just going to morph this straight into an ellipse. So let's make this ellipse slightly larger. And then I'm going to turn the ellipse off. So alt double clicking on the polygon shape just to bring that UI to the top. Um, I can then hit the plus button on deformers and then we'll just go down to morph. So um, open the connections uh, pop over here, double click on morph to load the UI. And then you end up with, this is, this is the morph, um, uh, these are the morph settings. So we've got strength, which will control um, how far along the morph you are basically. And then you've got the morph target, which is um, the end shape needs to go in here. Then uh, two very sensitive settings. <laughs> you've got morph divisions and sampling offset. A sampling offset will control the start point for the morphs because um, point zero, so the first point in a path, could be anywhere basically. And sampling offset will rotate that point, rotate that first point around the path, so that you can uh, better match, um, better match the the morph. Um, so, uh, but to get going, let's uh, just drag the ellipse shape into the morph target here, and then we'll just scrub strength and see what happens. Well, by default, it looks like we've got a great match for the um, for the ellipse here. The the um, uh, pentagon goes into the ellipse very nicely with the morph. We don't need to do basically any settings. We don't need to play with the morph divisions. We don't need to play with the sampling offset. So this is like the ideal scenario for morphing. However, we're really working in an ideal scenario. So let's change uh, from morphing a um, uh, two very similar shapes, I guess, into something that's a bit more wacky, a bit more, a bit diff more different. Uh, so let's um, alt click on the arc tool to make an arc primitive. I'm just going to hide the polygon so that we can see this. And then I'm going to change the outer radius uh, and the inner radius on the um, on the arc, and then change the start angle and end angle like so. Okay, so let's call this our shape that we want to morph into. Um, and then on this morph, if we just alt, alt or click to um, bring the uh, settings up for that, uh, we can just drag the arc shape in here. So just drag that onto the morph target, and then when we kind of scrub between the two. Nothing happens because I am not showing the polygon shape, I'm only showing the arc shape. So, whoops. Um, so let's scrub the strength and then we can see that this is the result. Now, um, I know what's wrong here, but I'm going to show you uh, basically how you would try to fix it. And then if you couldn't fix it, what you need to do. Uh, so let's go set the strength about halfway. And then basically when you've got folding geometry like this, the first thing you want to do is, uh, is to start scrubbing the sampling offset. Because if you scrub the sampling offset, you can see how we're kind of changing the pattern, the way in which the, um, uh, the where the morph starts and ends. So the corresponding points basically. So you can see the point at the top of the pentagon is kind of going to the bottom of the, of the the, um, arc here, uh, the inner path of the arc. Now, inner curve of the arc, uh, that's that's not um, that's not great. We don't want that. We in an ideal world, we'd want the point at the top of the polygon to go into the point at the top of the of the um, outer curve of the of the arc. However, no amount of scrubbing is going to get us there. And the reason that no amount of scrubbing is going to get us there is because these paths have different. Um, have uh, are drawn in a different direction. So one of them is drawn counterclockwise, the other one is drawn clockwise. And um, the only way to fix that is to reverse one of the paths. So in order to reverse the path in cavalry, the first thing you need to do is you need to make it editable. So that, you need to go to the shape menu here and you need to make it editable. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you go into the edit shape tool, um, on the with the arc turned on, I can't actually grab and move any of these points because it isn't editable. However, if I go and uh, choose make editable from the um, from the shape menu, this turns it into an editable shape. And if I want to, I can move these points around, which is great. Um, which is what you'd be doing if you're working with blend shapes. Anyway, um, so that with the, the um, with the arc made editable, what I can then do, I've just deleted the original arc. What I can then do is select the arc, go into the shape menu, and go reverse path. Okay. So back in the move tool. Let's load up that morph UI. Oh, it's already up. So let's just drag in the arc shape now. Okay, and now let's try morphing again. Uh, nope, <laughs> same mistake. You need to show the polygon, hide the arc. 
Okay, so what's happening now? Okay, so still we don't have a great um, we don't have a great um, uh, morph going on. So let's again go to that halfway state and then let's scrub the sampling offset until we can find a value that we like, where we've got no intersections and it looks like this is about the value that we're after. So if I now scrub the strength. We can see that the point at the top of the pentagon is staying at the top of the outer um, outer uh, curve of the arc, which is exactly what we want. So that basically is how you would set up a or how to troubleshoot uh, morphing from one shape to another shape. You basically, if you cannot sort it out by scrubbing the sampling offset, one of your paths has got a different direction, so you're going to need to reverse that path. And that's how you can go about getting a nice morph between two shapes. Now, unfortunately, there is something else that will complicate this. So if we're doing a, um, if we're doing a, a second morph, uh, so changing from this shape into, uh, say, this arc here, and then we want to go from, uh, from this arc into a third shape, then, then unfortunately, we kind of need to start again with a sampling offset. Um, so something else that affects the sampling offset is this morph divisions. So we can see the way that the morph works is it resamples the path. It kind of adds lots of divisions in and then tries to uh, match those paths kind of using some clever tricks. Um, however, you can see that by default, we've not matched the arc perfectly. And you need to add some more divisions to try and get this uh, to be a nicer match. Um, so adding some more divisions will basically yeah, get a much closer match to the path. So unfortunately, that means that our sampling offset will now be wrong. So if I scrub this to say 50%, you see that we're, we're, we're wrong again. So you want to mess with the offset. Okay, uh, so it wasn't too tricky to fix it at that time. We just scrub it a bit more and then you end up with, you know, back where we were. Uh, but we've got a much nicer representation of the arc there. Um, now, as I said, let's add a third, let's add a third more, uh, sorry, a second morph, a third shape, uh, which is going to break this offset again. Okay, so I'll explain why in a second. Let's just hide all these shapes and add a star. Um, let's change the radius of the star to make it quite large. And then we'll use the inner radius here and we'll add some more sides. So we've got the shape like this. Okay, cool. Um, so let's turn the star off, uh, turn the... Uh, polygon shape on and then on the arc shape so we've, remember we're morphing from the polygon to the arc and then we want to morph from, from the arc to the star so we need to add the morph to the arc now so the middle shape gets the gets the morph so let's add that morph let's load that ui and then let's drag the star into it okay so let, then let's scrub this okay and you see that it's not bad. It looks like they're not. It's not folding over itself completely. So I don't think we're going to need to uh, reverse the path. Um, and in fact, we don't. We just need to scrub the offset, something offset a little bit until we get that right intermediate shape, and then we can just see that our um, our morph is working. So these paths obviously have the same path direction. So that's great. Um, so that's good to go. Um, however. Now that we've added the star to the end of our, our morph chain, that's changed the end's topology, which means that on our original morph, the sampling offset is wrong. So we need to, again, find the right value for this. And again, it just involves a little bit of scrubbing, but we found the right value. Uh, this sampling offset will loop, by the way, so if you go too far, just keep scrubbing. <laughs> And um, yeah, we can find see that we have a nice morph from the um, uh, pentagon to the um, arc, and then we've got a nice morph from the arc into the star as well. So that's great. Okay, cool. Um, the final shape here, by the way, we probably do want to increase the um, morph divisions on that to, to maintain the arc shape. And then again, we need to scrub the... Um, scrub the sampling offset to get that to, to work again. Um, so just, just be aware, very sensitive to the, to the topology, but when you set it up nicely, you can get some lovely shapes. Ah, yes, we added morph divisions at the end, which means once again, <laughs> we need to adjust our sampling offset. Oh, it's just such fun. Let's keep going. I think this is gonna be about 12,000 or something. I don't know, a lot. Let's type in 12,000. Ooh, that was close, that was close. Okay, cool. So there we've got this nice morph and this nice morph here. Just be aware, whoops, nope, need that to be 100 for this one to work. Um, yeah, just be aware that um, changes to morph divisions, changes to the topology uh, of the shapes, changes to how many shapes you're using, they'll all affect the sampling offset. So that's the bit that's kind of fiddly, uh, but if you're, you're aware of what to do, um, you can get some very nice results out of morph.
Okay, I hope that helps. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.